Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel Data Shah. In the last lecture, we have discussed a two-phase method. So in this lecture also, we will be discussing uh, certain examples of the two-phase method. So consider this example, uh, maximize Z subject to the constraints. As uh, we could notice here, uh, the in the constraints, we have greater than equal to constraint. So we will be subtracting the surplus variable so that we can uh, write it in the standard form. So the standard form would be maximize z minus 4x1 minus 3x2 minus 9x3 subject to the constraints 2x1 plus 4x2 6x3 plus uh, that's minus the surplus variable equal to 15. The other constraint minus s2 equal to 12. Now whenever we are subtracting the surplus variable we always add the artificial variables so we'll be adding the artificial variables here. Now in the two-phase method uh, as we have discussed it in the last lecture also in the first phase we'll be writing the auxiliary uh, LPP where uh, we'll be writing the objective function as uh, this in which we have given uh, the cost as minus 1 to the artificial variable minus a1 minus a2 and this is uh, the constraints that are just uh, written in the standard form so always remember whenever we have uh, the maximize uh, problem uh, we always uh, give the cost of the artificial variables as minus 1. If it is a min minimization problem, then we always give uh, plus 1 as the cost of the artificial variables. Or you can just uh, convert the objective function into the uh, maximization type and you can just solve as it is. So uh, let's continue with the initial table that we have. So uh, the CJ would be 0, 0, and only minus 1 and minus 1 in the artificial variables. So these are the costs available to us. Uh, XP is this and the coefficients of the XIs, the SIs and the artificial variables uh, I have written. So the process remains the same as we are doing in the simplex method also. So uh, we have to calculate uh, the ZJ. So uh, ZJ would be equal to minus 2, minus 6, that's minus 8 minus 5 minus 12 1 0 um, this would be minus 1 this would be minus 1 so this would be 0 this is 1 not 0 1 now what would be delta j delta j is zj minus cj so minus 8 minus 5 minus 12 uh, 1 1 and this is 0 and this is 0 so uh, choosing the most negative so this would be our entering variable and to select uh, the leaving variable so we have to calculate the minimum ratio so the process remains the same and this would be 12 divided by 6 that's 2 so as we could see here uh, that uh, this is minimum so this would be the leaving variable now in the next iteration table we will be uh, writing a1 then instead of a2 uh, we will be writing x3 so the cost is minus one zero the pivot element that we have to consider here is the common is this so that means we have to the row 3 would be row 3 divided by 6 so quickly we can write down so 1 1 by 6 1 0 so I have not written artificial variable 2 because it has already gone from the uh, basis so it will not enter again so you can also exempt that or you can just write uh, the column again so uh, now row this is row 2 sorry row 1 
would be rho 1 minus 6 times rho 2 because we have to make this equal to 0. So this would be 15 minus uh, 6 to 0 is 12. This is coming out to be 3. So this is 3. So likewise we can calculate and the values uh, I'll be just substituting here. So this would be minus 1, 1 and 1. Now again calculating uh, Zj. So this would be 4 minus 3, 0, 1, 1, 1. Delta j. So Cj is written above here. So 4 minus 3, 0, 1. And this is 0. This is um, this is minus 1. So we are getting it as a 1 minus a 0. So CJ is, I just write it again. So uh, Z star as we could uh, notice here is uh, coming out to be minus 3. So now choosing the most negative uh, here the Z star was minus 27. It was not at the 0 level. So here also uh, as you will notice <coughs> And this is the most negative so if this is the most negative so this would be the entering variable and the leaving variable we have to decide from this so uh, let's calculate 3 by 3 that is equal to 1 and this is uh, 2 1 by 6 that is 12 so this would be the leaving variable and this is our pivot element so that means in the next iteration table we'll be uh, taking out the a1 artificial variable from the basis and x2 would be entering uh, the basic variables so consider the next table so here x2 will be entering x3 so the cost is 0 so uh, we'll be calculating it so as uh, 3 is the um, pivot element so we'll be row 1 would be row 1 divided by row 3 and for uh, row 2 it would be row 2 minus 1 by 6 times row 1. So uh, when we will be um, calculating the values we will be getting this as uh, because x1 uh, x3 is already there and this would be 1 and 0 this would be 0 1 so the rest of the values uh, when you will calculate you will be getting this as this so as you will notice I have not uh, written the column for the artificial variables you can also remove that so this is 1 over 80 and minus 2 over 9 so let us calculate a z star at this point z star is coming out to be 0 z j is again we are getting it as 0 c j is also so what is our delta j delta j is 0 0 0 so as a z star is equal to 0 and there is no artificial variables involved so in the phase 2 so in the phase 2 uh, we are entering in the phase 2 and uh, we will uh, write the objective function in the phase 2 so the objective function would be maximize z equal to uh, this we can also write this as maximize z equal to minus 4x1 minus 3x2 minus 9x3 this is um, plus 0 times s1 0 times s2 these are the surplus variables and these are the constraints so uh, the initial table uh, that uh, we will have here would have all the same elements so i'll just carry forward uh, this there and uh, Sorry. 
so I have uh, x2 and x3 so the only difference would be their cost uh, in this would be the cj minus 4 minus 3 minus 9 0 0 and uh, just writing the cost rest all the values would be same so I will just copy it from the last table So this is so now again we'll be check checking with the ZJ. So uh, this is uh, four uh, minus uh, eleven. So we are getting it as minus seven, minus three, uh, minus nine. So this is three uh, minus half. So that's a uh, 1 minus half and uh, we are getting it as uh, 1 and this would be minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 uh, minus 1 plus 2 would be just 1 so delta j that is zj minus cj as we could calculate this is minus 7 uh, plus 4 so it is minus 3 0 0 uh, half 1 so this is uh, the most negative as you could see here this is the most negative so this would be the entering variable so to decide as this is negative so we will not be considering this so we have only one option here so this would be our pivot element and uh, we could just calculate it it would be 11 over 6 divided by 11 over 9 so uh, this would be the leaving variable and we are getting it as 1.5 so in the next uh, table in the next table uh, you would notice that uh, we'll be having uh, instead of x3 we'll be having x1 so uh, i'll just uh, write it here only So x1 will enter, now the x1 values would be minus 4. So as this will be entering, I have to uh, make it 0, the above elements and 11 by 9 is a pivot element so we will be making it to 1. So quickly I will just uh, write the values. So this would be now uh, x1 is entering so this would be 1, 0, uh, sorry, 1, 0 and uh, after everything we are getting, so these are the values after the elementary row operations. So this is 3, 3 by 2 that is 1.5 so uh, quickly let's find out uh, zj uh, this is uh, minus 4 minus 3 so this is uh, we are getting 72 over 11 7 over 11 3 over 11 so uh, delta j zj minus cj would be um, again this is positive 7 by 11 3 by 11 and this is 27 by 11 so uh, we can calculate uh, the z here that's minus 9 uh, minus uh, 6 that's minus 15 so as all uh, delta j's are greater than equal to 0 so we stop here and uh, we have obtained the optimal solution 
given by x1 as minus 4, x2 as minus 3, x3 as 0. So in the uh, z that we have, it was minus 4 x1, minus 3 x2, minus 9 x3. So this would be minus 4. Um, so the an final answer would be 16 uh, plus um, sorry here um, it would be just written it incorrectly it would be 3 and uh, 1.5 and 3 so this would be uh, minus 6 minus 9 minus 0 so that's coming out to be z is equal to minus 15 so we can cross check uh, over here also we are getting the same value and this is also the solution for the LPP using the two phase method so quickly we'll uh, do one more question in which uh, we find out if the artificial variable is there at the positive level so uh, we'll not be moving further to the phase two so um, we have the question minimize z x1 minus 2 x2 minus 3 x3 subject to the constraints so we have all the equal to constraints in this these are the non-negativity constraints so uh, first of all uh, in the solution either uh, you can just uh, start in the phase one uh, with the same manner uh, and uh, you can just uh, add the artificial variables here and you will get uh, your answer by uh, in the phase one we will be writing the cost of the artificial variables as plus one because this is a minimization type so uh, to avoid confusion I am first converting my objective function into the maximization so maximization uh, of z star where z star is nothing but minus of z so this would be equal to uh, minus x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 subject to uh, the constraints I am adding the artificial variables so plus a1 and uh, 4x3 plus a2 is equal to 1 where all the xi is and the artificial variables are greater than or equal to 0 so uh, in the phase 1 in the phase 1 well, we'll, uh, the auxiliary LPP uh, that we will be having would be given by maximize uh, this is uh, z star i have already taken so i can take it as a dash a z dash a star so this would be 0 x1 0 x2 0 x3 minus a1 minus a2 so i'm adding uh, the the cost here so uh, subject to the same constraints uh, that was uh, given before so So just writing uh, the cost is minus 1 minus 1 and this would be again 2x1 plus 3x2 4x3 plus a2 equal to 1. So when you will put x1 x2 x3 equal to 0 so we are getting a1 as 2 and uh, a2 as 1. So this would be the basis, uh, basic solution that we have. So quickly writing the values 3 4 1001 so uh, calculating uh, the z star we are getting this as minus 2 uh, minus 1 that's minus 3 and uh, zj would be um, so this is uh, 2 minus 2 0 
minus 1 minus 3 minus 4 minus 7 this is just minus 1 this is also minus 1 so delta j would again be uh, zj minus cj so minus 4 minus 7 uh, 0 0 so as we could see here this is the uh, most negative so this would be the entering variable and uh, in this uh, the exit uh, leaving variable we could calculate it as uh, 2 over 3 and uh, 1 over 4 so this would be the minimum so this is the leaving variable uh, that uh, we have so in the next iteration table a1 would be there but instead of a2 uh, we'll be having x3 so the cost is zero um, the pivot element that we have is this so what we have to do uh, divide uh, the row 2 with 4 and you can make it 0 uh, 1 sorry so this is 1 by 4 half 3 by 4 0 and you can exempt this or you can just uh, write this uh, it doesn't matter because it will not come in the basis again so uh, making row 1 0 by this elementary row operation so just writing the values quickly so this is what we get so now again we will be calculating zj uh, zj would be 7 by 2 uh, this 5 by 4 0 minus 1 3 by 4 delta j zj minus cj because a cj 0 0 that we are having so this is uh, 0 and uh, this is 0 3 by 4 plus 1 uh, would be 7 by 4 so here uh, z dash star that we are having is uh, coming out to be minus 5 by 4 so as you will see uh, in this since uh, all the delta j's are uh, greater than equal to 0 so uh, the optimum uh, basic feasible solution has been attained right but in this phase uh, we will notice that the artificial variable a1 and a1 is there at a, a1 is there at a positive level positive level means uh, as you could see here the value of a1 is 5 by 4 so this is positive so it appears in the basis at a positive level so uh, the LPP doesn't possess any feasible solution so we will not be moving to the phase 2 in this example so this is the end of the two-phase uh, method. In the next lecture, we'll be talking about uh, the big M method.